welcome to the ghost corridor. It's still raining buckets outside, as you can tell by my hair. Uh, okay, so updates. Long stories made short. Kind of waiting on the hail and the rain to stop outside. It's been a very long day, and I'm actually proud of some of the things that I've managed to accomplish since the last time we've talked. Uh, I didn't get the Elvira pinball machine yet. Uh, negotiated a deal for a Godzilla pinball machine. I've got the I've got the Ghosts and Goblins machine paid off, netting me two hundred dollars back into my paycheck every month. Uh, did buy a new computer, so that's good news. I've got lots of good things happening. In fact. I'm getting ready to get a Costco deal going. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's not like I haven't been doing things, it's just I haven't really been doing as many of the things as I'd have liked to been doing. But, <laughs> so, there's also things I'd love to tell you about, but I literally can't tell you about them. That's the part that sucks. It's like, I have some really cool stories, but I can't publish them until my memoirs. So it's like, all right, fine, but okay. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much the major updates in a nutshell is things are going okay. I have no real complaints at the moment other than I'm looking forward to making $100,000 and quitting my day job and literally living off dividends for the rest of my life. That's going to be pretty cool. Let's talk about that. I mean, this isn't really a formal video. It's just I'm kind of talking, honestly, while I wait for the rain to stop because, I mean, again, there's kind of a lot of rain going on out there. That ain't mist. That's rain. So, yeah. It was coming down so hard that I legitimately was like, I can barely see to get to my apartment. I'm just going to pull in here and do a video. But... As I was saying, uh, I did the mental math and the actual math on, oh, sorry, uh, what would it take to quit my day job? Like, legitimately, what would it take to be able to quit my day job? And after the math worked out, you're looking at around 100000 to $150,000 before I can, you know, technically quit and it wouldn't affect my finances. Now, I know that's a ridiculous amount of money. That's a crazy amount of money. I know that. Uh, and people are going to poo-hoo me going, you can't do that. You can't make that kind of money per month. And it's like, you can, but it's going to take me a while. And, you know, it's better to have some kind of vague idea of, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four, than having no idea of how you're going to achieve your goal. Because that's where a lot of people go wrong, is they think, you know, once they have the money, everything else will be fine. And that's that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, you have to figure out what you're doing with the money before you have the money, so that when you have the money, you know what you're doing with the money, instead of, well, i really love to buy a new computer, or, oh, hey, let's get a, a Ghosts and Goblins arcade machine, or whatever the case may be. There's always something to spend your money on. But... Having focus and an idea of what you need to spend your money on makes a huge difference. I mean, I didn't spend a dime on this vending machine and I got it in my store. I didn't spend a dime on my Mountain Dew cooler. I didn't spend a dime on my uh, uh, Red Bull cooler over there. I mean, I've gotten so many cool things without spending a dime on them. You know, just by asking. It's like, hey, I'm a legitimate storefront, which I am. You know, can I have this in my store? There you go. Uh, and granted, there is a contract in this case, but I mean, you know, you do what you gotta do. And in my case, I've been doing some pretty cool things. But uh, the biggest, I think my best and most important success that I could be working on right now is literally being able to quit my job and still make money. Uh, even if I could get halfway to that goal, that's still way better than where I was previous. Why I say that is, uh, 
recently I started looking at my finances and I said, you know, there's a lot of money going out every month that I could probably put towards this instead of putting it towards other things. And that was when I started really significantly going, okay, well, if I took $200 out of every paycheck that I got, I could legitimately throw that at, you know, the stock market or an investment that would make me more money in the future, that I could build up into something even bigger or leverage into making me a deal uh, in my store. You know, that's, that's important there is most people don't think about, you know, a deal you can leverage not just once, but hundreds if not thousands of times and that's when the ghost quarter really started uh, to shine in my head it's like wait a minute hold on you know I don't have to come up with four thousand dollars in one sitting I already have four thousand dollars here I just have to be able to borrow against it and convince a bank to do it and that's when things started getting significantly uh, interesting because I'm like okay well I may not necessarily... That's where my knife went. Sorry, I was trying to figure out where that went the other day. Because I had a spare and I'm like, go away. This is my good knife. So, yeah. Anyway, I, I was sitting here and I was trying to figure out how to actually make it make me money. The, the business makes me money regardless of what I'm doing. And it all came down to equity. Basically, taking things that I've already bought and paid for and then being able to borrow against the things I've already bought and paid for which in my case is about 75% of the value so for every $100 I spend I can borrow $75 oh, that's pretty good uh, l let's be clear about that every pinball machine every arcade machine every single thing that I do I can borrow against. That's huge. And a lot of times you'll hear people talk about OPM or other people's money. And to a degree that is a valid strategy, but it back goes back to what I said at the start of this video. You have to know what the money is being used for. There's kids running up and down the street. You're gonna hear screaming, I can't do anything about it. I'm not gonna tell them to shut up. They're having fun. Let it be a thing. Anyway, uh, my point is, uh, I realized that it's not hard to make money. It's much harder to know what you're doing with the money when you have it. Because it gets real tempting, the more money you have, to spend it on something that you don't need to spend it on. Uh, it gets real tempting and people don't really appreciate just how tempting that gets to be sometimes where you're just like man I'd really like to do that thing but that's really expensive and I justify the computer in two respects number one uh, I can borrow against that computer number two uh, that computer allows me to sell more cards produce videos and improve my YouTube channel which is something I would really like to improve because doing these videos via my phone is not great. I should be doing better than that. And I'm not proud of the fact that I'm still using my phone to do a YouTube video. So bear that in mind. Anyway, uh, I've been going on for about nine minutes now, so I better do the legal disclaimer so that I don't get sued or in trouble. So. Anything I say in this video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial investor. Uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. Do your own research. You invest at your own risk. You're equally likely to make money as you are to lose money in the stock market. More likely to lose money in the stock market. Uh, uh, dividends are not guaranteed. And please consult your financial and or tax and or uh, legal advisor. Uh, for any of your specialty questions you may have, I am none of those things. I am just a random guy on YouTube, as Jasper Singh would say. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, 
thank you for watching this video. Good seeing you. Just kind of wanted to randomly update you on some things. Looks like the rain's finally died out, so I think I'm going to go home and have myself a chicken bowl or something. Uh, not a sponsor, just uh, the banquet chicken bowls are pretty good. I recommend the Nashville ones. They're spicy, but not too spicy, so uh, anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you for watching. Good seeing you. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below because you're gonna you're not gonna want to miss what I got coming up next, especially when I'm working on getting a Godzilla pinball machine. Oops, did I say that out loud? I guess that means you uh, just found out something you weren't supposed to find out. I have a way of handling that.